on what sure. you're doing now. But it does, you know, it does kind of like break down a little bit of that standard narrative of right. where people come from to their practice, sure. you know. And some people don't even go to any kind of school at all and they're right. autodidacts and they're self-taught and they do have, you know, a high intellect and a high degree of theory and all of that and they make it work, you know. Right. So, or they're like art school dropouts, you know. Right. <laughs> you right. know, and they still are, you know. I'm thinking specifically of like Chuck and George and Brian, Brian, uh, Brian Scott and Brian Jones that like, they're amazing and they just sort of have like, taken themselves, you know, to task with learning what they need to sure. do to make their practice work. Right. Um, and but, you know, uh, I, I think eventually, uh, hopefully, eventually we'll have lots of people listening and hopefully, you know, your story and, you know, uh, I think the longer people listen, they're going to hear bits and pieces of my story to, you know, understand that, you know, just because you start one place doesn't yeah. mean that, you know, that's where... Uh, I was, I, I worked in the business world for a long time and, you know, some of the jobs were really uh, rewarding. Uh, like I had, had a startup in Silicon Valley and that was awesome um, until it wasn't. And, you know, <laughs> I, but, you know, I had a job in mortgage finance uh, for five years that just about killed me. You know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like construction work. It didn't, yeah. it wasn't breaking my body. But it was it was breaking my spirit mm -hmm. because um, you know it was one of the, I was working for what's now Bank of America and um, it, I was talking to uh, people about you know uh, getting a loan to buy a, uh, buy your houses or refinance or take equity out of their home and um, I was having the same conversation with people you know twenty times a day. So over the course of five years, you do the math. I had like the exact same conversation like four thousand times, and as as an artist, to have the exact same conversation mm -hmm. four thousand times, I can relate. <laughs> it's just There's like jobs like that. We'll right, put it that way. Yeah. Like, I, it uh, yeah, it just about killed me. But yeah. you know, um, but yeah, you you I I um, you know I don't make you know. Today, I'm not making as much financially as I was at some, maybe some other point. Mm -hmm. But um, my level of uh, of happiness and satisfaction in my life and mm -hmm. my lifestyle far exceeds where that Same. was, right? Yeah. And you know, and I and uh, I think of it, you know, as a long game that yeah, same. you know, you know that. You know, just being an artist, I'm probably going to live to 95 anyway. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and, you know, there is no, uh, no thing as retirement. No, you and, don't. Yeah. You right. Don't. And so the like, but you know, the thing uh, is, so like, I just keep at, you know, it's just, it's just slow progression and, you know, it's just going to build on itself. And I'm just, you know, I, but, you know, one of the stories that prompted this sort of like, uh, catharsis or the idea, um, that you use a particular word that was really good, uh, was like this moment of insight, um, or epiphany, um, as I was working and, and working, working in municipal government is sleepy, right? It's sleepy. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very authoritarian in many ways. Um, uh, and it, it can be very cushy too, um. But uh, one of the guys that I work with said, you know, he'd been there like 35 years and he was, he was a great guy. And he basically said, you know, ups or downs, whatever happens, you know, heartbreak or, you know, excitement, you get your paycheck every two weeks. And I was just kind of like, well, that's very practical of Eugene. And, uh, but he also <clears throat> said, you know, there was a guy that they used to hang out with and they had their lunch crew and I would go to lunch with right. these guys that were really nice. And, um, he said, you know, there was a guy, we always invited him, you know, to lunch. And he, he kind of had that, like, no, I need to work through lunch. I need to stick right. around, you know. And uh, he was really dedicated and he was known. And then um, he had a heart attack and dropped dead at the office. And they never even refilled his position because they were like, we were just keeping him around because he was so dedicated. And, like, they didn't even really need that job anymore. But he was so dedicated to it. And for me, that was like... Oh my God, that's the worst cautionary tale I could ever think of, wow. you know, is that, you know, um, like you said, 
happiness really boils down to what you need to function and have meaning in your life. And if you're having the same conversation 4,000 times, you know, of a course of a job, the same exact one, right? right. Um, what's the meaning of that for right. you? And what is that doing for you? Um, and if the meaning is, well, I, the only, it's like Citizen Kane. If right. the only thing that you ever want to do is make a huge amount of money to give your kids and that's right. meaningful to you, then you can suffer through any of that right. to do it because it's meaningful for you. But if it's not, then what is it, ha- you know, what is, what is the cost? Yeah. And, you know, I, th- I, I think, that there's there's like a generational difference. I mean, like I feel like my parents' generation, um, you know, your job was your job, yeah, and you got you you pursued fulfillment somewhere else, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. You know, I feel like, um, you know, I'm I'm a Gen Xer, you know. <laughs> now there's like you know, Y Z millennial, yeah. And, you know, I feel like, you know, this current generation, I'm not even sure I'm part of that, but this current generation is trying to find fulfillment in their profession. Yeah. Which is, I understand that and it's noble, but it's also a little bit of a slippery slope because, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's part of the dissatisfaction that people talk about with a lot of millennials mm-hmm. is that there aren't, you know, I don't think there are enough jobs out like there. That. Yeah for for people to to find get fulfillment in their profession well and i think i'm glad i'm in one of them yeah Yeah, well and i think that's gets projected onto what it's like to be to be an artist or uh i think that a lot of that unhappiness comes out in this negative venting towards people who are fulfilled in in their jobs or who see that like there are some parts of every job whatever you're doing teaching art um you know, do, you know, being a, your real estate agent or, or whatever that looks like is that there's some parts of the job that are why you do it. And there's some t- parts of the job that are why you get paid to do it, right. you know, like, and, Absolutely. and that's, you know, it's a trade off in everything. And there's nothing that's going to look like the pie in the sky vision of it. Not even, you know, having a studio practice or whatever that, that is, it's, you know, or even being an art star, you know, right. it's like, you know, a lot of people who are known for a particular style of work, maybe there's days where they're just like, I fucking don't want to make this anymore, right. but I have to. Right. Because it's my, you know, bread and butter or my meat and potatoes or whatever right. that is. Um, so, you know, I, I do think that there is some of that um, where you, you just have to figure out. And I was mentioning Hugh McLeod's um, book, Ignore Everybody. is like, he calls it the sex and cash factors like there's sex appeal projects and then there's mm-hmm. cast projects and you have to know which is which right. you know like uh and you got to do both of them you can't just only go for you know go for the cash because you'll lose your you know right. it beats you down right inside and you don't have the creative energy it, there's symbiosis there that you have right. to kind of figure out what what do you need what kind of lifestyle do you want to live? Right. Um, and what can you, what can you make work? Um, yeah. so for me, like the compromise of, you know, gr- growing up in an affluent suburb of what my peers were, you know, off doing, uh, it looks different for me. Right. And being comfortable defining success for yourself is really important. Right. Um, is that, you know, and, and weathering, weathering a hell of a lot of rejection, I think too, is right. like, I think that the self-esteem generation would <laughs> really do well to have a peek at how much rejection is part of a lot of the, you know, and no one tells you that. And they're not posting right. that on Instagram. They're not posting that on Facebook. Um, they're no, <laughs> hey guys, right. I got another rejection today. No, right. no one's posting that. They're posting their acceptances or, right. you know, their no, openings. But, you know, that's, I mean, it reminds me like when, when I was, you know, it was like 18 years ago now, but when I was in Silicon Valley and we, we had this startup and we were going around to venture capitalists asking for money, right? Uh, you start <laughs> with one idea and I mean, you know, it's like you and your partner in your PowerPoint and, you know, you, you go in and you kind of bury yourself to this person who, you know, has like four minutes to listen to your five minute presentation and, you know, you get brutally honest feedback. And yeah. you can either 
walk out of there broken yeah and you know, just kind of like kick the dirt or you can walk out of there you know go, okay, we p- got pissed rerun. off yeah. and say you know what that guy didn't know what he was talking about yeah or you know you can consider this person you know okay he maybe he does know what he's talking about mm-hmm. and this is free you know consulting, consulting. right <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. you know i, I had a, a venture capitalist you know, tell us like, you know, I mean, he was really kind. He was like, you know, he told, sat down and said, you know, you know, this, you know, I have a problem with this and this and this in your plan. But, you know, um, if you came back to me six months from now and you're smart, it's your business gonna, is going to look totally different. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the just... Again, you know, it's a matter of, you know, it's like being in the art world. Look, you're going to get a lot of criticism. You're going to get a lot of feedback. You know, what's good feedback? What's mm-hmm. not? You know, where, who, who, whose voice should you listen to? And you have to kind of qualify all of that. Yeah. And, um, but, it takes you know. experience and it, and it <clears> takes <throat> some discernment, which only comes by doing more. Right. You know, like, and trying you know, and having the initiative to just run after things. Um, <clears throat> I forget. Um, it, there was something on NPR when I was driving home from the night class that I was teaching and um, basically saying that, you know, I can tell who's going to succeed from who's going to fail is that the people who are going to succeed fail more. They're right. they're running and doing, you know, everything yeah. they possibly no, it, could right. and trying it, it, whereas these people are waiting for the silver right. bullet, you right. know. Yeah, like, you know, the, the culture, you know, that culture in Silicon Valley, it's like, and I, I tell my, I, this is an edict that I bring into my painting class is that I tell the kids, okay, you know, you have never painted before. You're, we're going to paint and you're going to fail, but we're going to fail quickly. And keep the, moving. And, right. In the Put next that painting. in the garbage if you want. Right. In the John next Bob painting. Sorry, cremated his paintings. Right. Like I will not make any so, more boring art. It's right. okay. It's yeah. Okay. And so we're like we're yeah. going to fail quickly. We're going to do another one, and we're you know we'll you know if you don't like it, great. We're just going to keep, keep on moving. moving, and you're going to get to the point where you know you're going to make something you like. At yeah. Some point. <laughs> but you know, uh, we're not going to languish in making yeah. you know bad stuff. No. We're going to just move quickly, <laughs> yeah. right? I, I struggle with that with my students as well of acclimating them to the disappointment because like I right. mentioned earlier, it can be discouraging and devastating if you don't pick dust right. off and keep going and finding, you know, what's going to sustain you, you know, I think it's that. helpful to give them the expect- expectation of failure Yeah, because it, it relieves this burden on them that, you know, Oh, I fixed mindset of like yeah, I don't have talent if I make you know, something right. ugly. Yeah. Or, or, you know, there there are students that will just like get fixated on you know trying to make it perfect, and they get more and more Fidgety, frustrated because yeah. you know they don't have the skill set yet. You're yeah. learning the skill set, yeah. You know, and uh, you know, I find it's freeing to you know explain. And uh, I think it sort of works. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's just. Realizing that something is a practice, right. you know, um, and no one arrives. No one right. gets, goes beyond criticism, right. you know, even the biggest artists. They right. never, you know, it's part of it and it's a healthy, good thing. Right. Um, but in so many other parts of our lives where that that model doesn't apply or doesn't fit. And right. so w- the way we understand it can uh, be confounding and, and um uh, like it's like it's negative or it's a sign that you're you're not doing well right. but it actually you know it's, it's the opposite you thrive on criticism and mm-hmm. the, the discourse even if it's the ability to discern for yourself what's working and what's not you know hopefully right. that's the goal of hearing sure. you know the brutally honest feedback yeah. you know yeah there's there's an art podcast that i listen to that that the host has outlawed the use of the word practice <laughs> and yeah, you know, because he, I think he feels like it's overused, and that you know, that you know, uh, that I, I think maybe he takes objection to the fact that you know it means that you're uh, you're practicing something instead of doing it. Yeah. But I come from a mindset where like you I know, think like I play, medical I, practice, right? You know, I mean, like, medical practice, yeah. legal practice, or even you know, you know, I come from a mindset where I, I played college football. It's like I. 
I understand the value of practice. <laughs> right. I like, you know, you don't just, you know, create, it's like you have to put in the hours.